Welcome viewers to Historical Journeys. Bit by bit, a gathering plunges into the totally dark of a restricted underground passage. The walls perspiring, stinking of old creosote and wet earth. The air is wet and tacky. However, the experience is at last shown up at their objective in excess of 100 stages into the earth. 18 months of difficult work has paid off. Furthermore, in the wake of committing nearly 3,000 hours to unearth a long deserted the second Great Warborough Network, 50 workers and specialists get to investigate it in full. Its specialists slipped into England's seaside precipices and found spooky passages brimming with the Second Great War relics. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. It only takes a second, and you won't miss any of our future videos. Let's get started. The Fan Cove Profound Haven lies around 75 feet underneath the ground. Held set up by metal backings it's worn of passages, traverses an area of 3,500 square feet. The sanctuary is situated in southeast Britain, profound inside the purported White Bluffs of Dover, a line of high chalk precipices that neglect the English Channel. However, as per the public trust the regarded legacy noble cause that deals with the site, the passages are in for weak-willed. Addressing the English paper, The Gatekeeper in 2015, one of its delegates depicted the sanctuary as a dim, filthy and wet climate, not reasonable for the people who are claustrophobic or flimsy. All things considered, the Germans were completely purpose on vanquishing the unified realm similarly, as they had various different countries in Africa and Europe. The unified realm could try and have respected German occupation. However, for its detached island geology, the White Bluffs of Dover have long given a wall against forceful powers. So the precipices are a public image, similar as the sculpture of freedom in the US. The 300 feet high precipices stand sentinel over around eight miles of shoreline in the English province of Kent, their particular white face is so helpful in wartime were fertilizer of outstandingly fine delicate chalk that shaped more than huge number of years. One of the earliest verifiable records of Dover was given by the Roman sovereign Julius Caesar, who endeavored to attack Britain first and 55 BC and afterward again a year after the fact, accepted to be the most seasoned record of the country. His discourses on the Gallic conflict portrayed how the early Britons utilized the White Bluffs to go after his conflict party by tossing weapons from the culmination. Hundreds of years after the fact, the English crown requested the development of Dover Palace, which was subsequently alluded to as being critical to Britain. Gareth Wiltshire, the supervisor of the White Precipices of Dover guest experience, made sense of that the stronghold was utilized for political purposes. Normally, the bluffs that have guarded England during wartime have been addressed on many times in English culture. He says there is a precipice whose high and twisting head frightfully searches in the bound profound. Today, the bluffs are still frequently connected with their guarded and emblematic job in the Second Great War. During this worldwide emergency, firearm batteries were built on the bluffs at South for land one stone, and obviously at Fan Inlet. These figured out how to sink around 29 hostile boats between them. Aggregately known as the Stronghold, England's seaside batteries were likewise used to test spear-hitting radar innovation. Fan Cove Profound Sanctuary and its sister protections were built after the English top state leader Winston Churchill came to Dover in the late spring of 1940. The site clearly made him incensed, and he set out to introduce gunnery firearms on the coast. We should demand keeping up with unrivaled cannons positions on the Dover projection. Regardless of what type of assault they are presented to legends, we need to battle for order of the waterways by ordnance to annihilate the adversary batteries and invigorate our own. On that day, German mounted gun shells designated Dover Town, and subsequent to overcoming France, the German military machine introduced monstrous batteries along the French coast. The batteries were expected to be utilized during Activity Ocean Lion, the code name for the arranged attack of Britain. The 172nd Burrowing Organization's Regal Specialist started work on Fan Cove Profound Haven during November 1940. However, the horrid English weather conditions demonstrated a block to their work. By the turn of the month, however, six-inch gunnery weapons were positioned at the site. The designers progressively cut the haven in its passages and fitted the walls with sturdy metal backings to ship the earth and waste out of the passages they developed a railroad. The waste was then stacked onto trucks controlled to the edge of the precipices and unloaded into the ocean. On December 10, 1940, a greater number of than 100 fighters having a place with the 203rd Coast Battery of the illustrious Ordnance, remembering for officials took up stations for its sloppy passages. Development of the complex was finished toward the finish of February 1941, nearly 100 days after it started, 
and in June Churchill himself visited the office, considered a spearheading establishment at the time Fan Sound Battery, highlighted a large group of valuable conveniences, including a medical clinic generator, radar, washrooms, and convenience regions. Its most profound levels were home to the supposed profound haven, a complex of bomb-proof loads, complete with bunks and weapons stores. Fan Inlet had the biggest profound haven of Britain's beachfront batteries. The battery discharged its firearms interestingly on February 28, 1941. Its weapons were short-reach and simply cautious, however. The main battery prepared to do long-reach assaults was the close-by one stone battery, which was home to a couple of 15-inch firearms with the perky epithets of Winnie and Pooh. At last, Fan Sound, one stone and south for land, were converged under a solitary order known as the 540 Coast Regiment. So Fan Bay safe house was pressed brimming with earth and flotsam and jetsam, and aside from a careful metal plate on a precipice top, all hints of its presence were eliminated. The public trust consequently raised $1.6 million to buy a part of the Dover Bluffs in 2012. At first, be that as it may, the foundation had no clue about the property contained the remaining parts of Fan Cove Profound Haven. However, when it understood it did accidentally secure the office, it set about uncovering the mind boggling, the public trust, who found the safe house one day nearly coincidentally. The main hint to its presence had been a little break in the land. Thus, with the assistance of various workers, the trust got the essential flight of stairs free from garbage gauging nearly 30 tons. Eventually, approximately 100 tons of garbage must be eliminated the hard way. Specialists and specialists from a large number of fields contributed, including woodworkers, circuit testers, geologists and manufacturers, and at rail route sleepers were introduced to work with fixes to the passages. The haven is a significant piece of wartime hair proverb, and it's likewise a piece of failed to remember history he expressed the narrative of the cross-channel weapons. Eventually, the passages filled in as a sort of time container. From the get-go, for instance, volunteers discovered a few needle and string, presumably khaki settled inside a passage wall. Earthy colored shaded khaki has been available in English military regalia from the 1840s onwards. Normally, the passages cover dispose of military supplies including loads of live ammo. Volunteers found American .3 goodness type rounds in English, .303 cartridges, concealed inside little openings between metal backings, proposing the soldiers had been generously furnished. Revolting spray painting has decorated washrooms since Roman times and fan base asylum volunteers found laboratory LAF scratched upon the wrecked pieces of the latrine blocks. Initially a paper title this well-known trademark was a reference to the English military and their evidently need support for their Soviet partners. The word Blanco involved here as an action word alludes to a cleaning substance that troops utilize to clean their stuff. Albeit fairly dark, the writer wrote a few military-themed books during his lifetime including men-at-arms and the pair undertakings of Private Paget. However much the soldiers were depended with the hard and hazardous undertaking, they might well likewise have persevered through incredible fatigue and forlornness. Among the most significant disclosures were a few acoustic mirrors from the Second Great War. Before the innovation of radar acoustic mirrors were utilized to distinguish approaching foe assaults, looking like colossal substantial dishes with measurements of 15 feet, the mirrors worked by centering moving toward sound waves, at Fan Cove, a couple of acoustic mirrors were introduced in the bluffs. The Fan Strait acoustic mirrors were important for an early advance notice framework that incorporated a chain of comparable gadgets at North for Land and Joss Inlet. The framework addressed the perfection of over 20 years of trial and error by the English Air Service. They found that the size and state of acoustic mirrors changes how they center sound. By the beginning of the Second Great War, the English researcher Sir Robert Watson Watt was at that point near creating radar innovation However, the sound mirrors weren't completely outdated. After the German aviation-based armed forces set off assaults on England's radar stations, they kept on being of helpful assistance. The public trust started uncovering the sound mirrors in May 2014. The acoustic mirrors were then completely uncovered in less than a month. Extra work on the Haven's unique entry additionally presented to stowed away generator room. In the main portion of 2015, Engineers removed the remainder of the garbage from the passages and doors, contiguous the recently uncovered acoustic mirrors. All that remained were a few last superficial errands, the development of seats, the treatment of woodwork, a few composition, and other minor undertakings. He said seeing the passages in their crude state when they were first experienced, taking care of curios and giving visits resembles remaining in the strides of history to be essential for the digging group. Reflecting the work the regal designers initially took to unearth the haven was exceptionally extraordinary today, 
Guests can encounter the sanctuary for themselves with a couple of minor stipulations, no high heels or shoes. All visits are directed and hard caps are required. For the individuals who meet these models, however, a remarkable encounter is standing by. The white precipices of Dover are a quintessential image of Englishness, dissimilar to the public lines of Europe, which have moved on many times throughout the long term. These chalk bluffs connote a persevering through actual limit that can never be moved. It likewise mirrors the character of an island country. Thanks for watching. If you want to stay updated with our latest videos, subscribing is the way to go. Just click that red button below and become a part of our channel family.